Hello, welcome to another landscape oil painting. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the painting I'm bringing you today, it's a skyscape. That's my new uh, term I came up with. Prop, I can't be the first, you know. But a uh, skyscape uh, called uh, Drama Sky, and it is dramatic. And um, so we're painting on a gray panel here. Um, lots of times it's, uh, you know, usually I like that hardboard, that brown color, but in this case I had all these grays and things. I definitely like a lot of cool things going on, and I would have been fighting that brown. Uh, it, it would have been possible to do, but a bit difficult. My underpainting color here is black. Now I should point out that this painting uh, is in the members area. Uh, full color mixing session there, and it's not overly long. These... Uh, I like to do these skyscapes in an expedient manner, um, you know, so uh, they're fresh and the, ex the brushwork is expressive and um, I think that's uh, really important. In fact, I just did one today, uh, not this one, but um, you know, it came out pretty good and I, uh, you know, of course was saying stuff that the members would hear there and one thing I remember saying was like, you know, I really... <laughs> At every point with one of these, I get like, I don't know how this is supposed to go. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what to do, but you know what? I just keep doing stuff. And what I try to do is not overwork it. That's really the main thing. I want a really fresh and expressive quality. And that's the big attraction to going over something like a sky that has all these, you know, essentially abstract shapes, you know. Now we can tell it's a sky and it's cohesive and stuff. Um, now this particular uh, painting is based on a photo I've had in my little um, sky reference folder for quite a while, but haven't really been able to use it. It's just a bit too dramatic for a painting. Uh, it was like sort of star on its own kind of thing. And um, I've done some things to it. Uh, for one, You've got to watch out for the extra wide angle of uh, most, uh, it seems almost every landscape photo of a sky is, is shot extremely wide. Not not so wide that it's a fisheye, but it was very wide. And so what happens is like, you see this bit of land I've indicated off on our right? Absolutely tiny in the reference image. Also, everything uh, that uh, was coming from the side was at a definite distinct diagonal and uh, I straighten this out and <clears throat> pardon me doing stuff like that is good because it gives your painting a much more human feeling like if you were a person standing on this uh, beach uh, looking at this all brilliant sky and its reflections in the uh, the wet sand um, and water uh, you would be having a similar perspective. You wouldn't have these, uh, you can't see as wide as a wide angle lens. So it's good to remember that if you're going to make your own sort of paintings like this. And I know I pointed this tip out before, but you know, I'm always pointing out tips. Uh, I would also uh, point out, uh, check out the members area. This will be for sale in my store too. Uh, a good price. It's a lovely painting. And, um, oh, the other thing I kind of wanted to touch on before we get back into talking about this painting itself is uh, my book has been written, okay? I'm pulling it together. I've been working with an editor and uh, we're, we're getting close to having something that, um, you know, will be in some sort of saleable format. I'm obviously going to contact some, some publishers uh, uh, to do the printing of the actual physical book, which is really what I'd like to see happen, but in the meanwhile, I, will, I most likely will have PDFs for sale, so stay tuned for that, and what will be great about that is over the years in the, on the channel, I have a, a lot of people come and say, well, you know, you never talk about this or that, well, but I have. I've talked about every aspect of my process over and over, endlessly, and so uh, this is a uh, my idea was that I can get it all in one spot, and make it uh, pretty affordable so stay tuned for that so I'm just kind of pre since it's written now I feel good about uh, just talking about it yeah because it's going to happen in some shape or form yeah God willing anyway um, so 
what's this uh, going on with this painting? Okay, we're playing these warm grays off the cool. That is just the funnest thing ever with cloudy skies, gray skies. Um, and you want to look at every opportunity you can to do that. Um, and, and you may even have, uh, in fact, I have painted um, decent cloudy skies from black and white reference and brought in my own warms and cools. So you could take some cues from the photo, obviously, but um, you could also really just kind of ad lib, you know. Uh, that's one of the other reasons I've really been very uh, into doing these skies lately is I just, uh, uh, I mean, I've got a bit of reference and it, it, you could tell probably that maybe that it was based on the reference, which by the way, you can see if you are a member, I, I, I show you and share that with you at the beginning of the video. Um, but, you know, it's just, uh, it's just inspiration, you know, and, um, there's so many places and ways where I change colors, I change shapes, I move elements uh, around. Um, I do some of that with a reference uh, prior to painting. I, I do, I'm a big believer in getting things set up. Like I did straighten out those wide angle issues. I did make the little, um, you know, sort of landform in the back larger. Um, but there's a lot of other things I kind of just make mental notes about. Like I want to do this and I want to do that. And I just do them as I'm painting because the point is to make a painting, not to copy a photo and paint. And uh, I know a lot of you have heard about me, uh, heard from me on this um, constantly. But you know, there was a painter, and you should really go check out his blog, Stapleton Kearns, a great blog. He kept it going for two years solid. And he, kind of like my book, shared everything he knew about painting. Um, and, far, and far more than you could fit in a book. I mean, a lot of about. Uh, um, art history and a bunch of other stuff, but um, one of the things he was always stressing is like he would his his method and approach was to go out into nature and paint in plein air, you know, and then later on, um, and sometimes much later on, like maybe even in the winter months, so he might go out and do his uh, plein air paintings, um, or his starts, if you if you will, he might go out and do all those in the um, the spring and the summer and then when the fall and the winter came around he's in his studio finishing them and that is a brilliant way to work um, and the reason why he did that was he does it and he would take some photos too which shares shares those on this blog I um, mean a lot of his photos I would go well, I could make a painting from that but the reason he uh, didn't work with the uh, photos is because he felt he made better paintings working uh, plein air and then finishing them in the studio and one of the things he always stressed was that you need to design your painting. You can't just uh, copy what's in front of you. That never works. You have to have a plan. Um, and I've taken that to heart. And, and even back in the uh, it was early days for me reading this blog, 2009 or so. And um, I still did a bunch of bad paintings, but uh, and I have done some uh, plein air work. Uh, but my approach to photos, and one of the reasons I'm always stress stressing all the traps inherent in them, is that I prefer to work in this more designed and uh, toneless vein. I I don't particularly care for painting in plein air. It can be real fun. I will say, if you haven't done it, you should try it. You might find, uh, and there have some, some been some people that were, you know, um, learning to paint on the channel and then moved on to plein air later and found that that was where their bliss was, you know, and that's all good, but it's not really for me. Um, but what is for me is to be super, super aware of what the problems are with the photo. I mean, what are they? I mean, um, for when you got that wide angle issue or making everything in the middle distance or distance super tiny super far away you have those extreme diagonal angles um, from things that in in the real world we would perceive as being pretty much straight um, you have the fact that the whole surface has been flattened into two dimensions now on one hand that's a bit of an aid um, on the other hand um, things can, uh, you, you can lose depth that, that would be very apparent if you were viewing the scene in real life. 
Um, I do think it's good to take your own uh, reference photos. Um, I always have. <clears throat> I don't always make every painting I do from um, a photo I've taken, but um, I, I, I definitely do if there's a scene, you know. Um, and it really is the thing out there in the world and nature. It's like uh, after a while, after doing lots of paintings, you get to look at a scene before you photograph it and go, this could make a painting, this couldn't make a painting. Um, I definitely recommend if you're doing that, um, which you should be, even with your phone, you can take photos good enough to uh, make paintings from. Um, you know, try a scrunch, a scrunching down on your knees, you know. Um, definitely try different perspectives, but that'd be my, my one biggest tip. Don't always shoot at that human height, um, pointing down or pointing up or pointing straight, you know. Try a few different angles and perspectives. And also, um, you know, maybe you have a zoom lens, maybe you don't. But if you don't, you know, zoom with your feet, get in on things. Try framing uh, things using the rule of thirds and things like that. Um, because the painting really starts there with uh, your your uh, apprehension of the scene and nature, right? Um, and then from the photo, of course, I'm a big believer in um, working with and manipulating that uh, photo reference pretty extensively um, as a part of my creative process, you know? Um, and uh, it, it truly is. And uh, if having something inspiring uh, that's a reference in front of you is a big part of making good paintings. It really is. Uh, so don't uh, don't hesitate to. Uh, now you may say, well, I'm not a. <clears throat> and I was um, employed working in Photoshop full time for uh, 13 years, so I know Photoshop very well. But um, let's say you're not technically oriented or whatever. What you, what you can do is you could. Um, I don't even know if you need to make them public. You can put your uh, your pictures up on Instagram and, and play around with using their filters. There's also a lot of apps on your phone or your iPad um, that'll do some pretty interesting things to photos. Don't hesitate to use those. It might make a, give it a certain cast or whatever. Um, and the other thing I would say, if you're really serious about um, painting, uh, you know, it's worth your time to learn a bit about Photoshop. Um, and at some point, I'm, I'm contemplating making doing a book on that because um, I think it's a huge part of my process, to be honest. That so much creativity starts there, um, and, and especially when it's informed by experience of actually doing paintings and knowing what's going, uh, what kind of scene's going to make a nice painting, and what sort of compositions are going to fail and other traps. Now. Um, yeah, a lot of tips in this video. That's good. It's tip heavy, so hopefully you've made it this far. Um, if you have, consider um, giving me um, one of those little thank you uh, donations down there below um, and uh, help support my process. I do this uh, full time, so um, it hasn't been an easy time for artists. Not complaining, just saying, you know. Um, it's, uh, it's uh, well, you know it is. So if you have a little extra and you got some value from this video, um, help, help a fella out, help a brother, help a brother out. <laughs> and if you, you know, you can't, you can't, that's all good. Uh, you know, I can click the like, I guess. And I like comments very much as well. I'd love to be supported that way. Um, and if you, if you're doing pretty well, you know, like I said, this painting's for sale in my store. There's a lot of good things for sale in my store. Ship them to you. Um, international shipping is included from sunny, well, today it's rainy, rainy New Zealand. Um, but uh, your satisfaction is guaranteed, so it's risk-free for you. Yeah. Anyway, um, I really like the way this painting turned out, and I hope you uh, enjoyed watching me do it. So, uh, if you want to learn a bit more about painting and stuff, I mean, I would be really a good move to try out the members area. There's also a few um, here in the non-members section. Um, if you drill back, go to the channel itself, um, you'll see some longer videos, two hours, uh, some are three. Um, and those are very much like what you get in the members area too. So kind of blow by blow as I'm painting, showing the color mixing. Um, and tips in the, and it's one thing to remember tip as I'm sitting here in my office recording this video. Um, but uh, tips, while I'm uh, on the front lines of battle, 
you know, in the throes of battle, slinging the paint around. It's so fun. And uh, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, do me a favor. Do me a solid. Take good care of yourself, your family, and all your loved ones. You got to cherish your family, you know. Uh, I do, you know. Anyway, until I come back with another video, take good care, stay out of trouble, and God bless you and your family.